In today's video lesson, we're going to learn about a concept known as the limiting reactant. So basically what that is, is it's the reactant that's in the smallest quantities, and it will prevent the production of all the product, even if you add more of the other reactants. So if you recall, balanced chemical equations tell us precisely how many atoms or molecules of a substance are required to react to produce certain products. So in this reaction that we have as our example, we have four iron atoms reacting with three molecules of oxygen to produce two molecules of iron three oxide. So in real life, we can't measure out precise amounts of of molecules. We, we usually measure out masses or volumes of things and we might not have the correct balance. So there will be one reactant that will limit the reaction. So if I don't have quite enough iron, it doesn't matter how much oxygen I have, the iron is going to limit how many iron three oxides we can produce. So to help explain the limiting reactant, I always like to use an analogy. And the analogy that I like to use is building sandwiches. So imagine we wanted to make this delicious salami sandwich right here. And imagine that to build a salami sandwich, you need two pieces of bread, three pieces of salami, two tomatoes, and a piece of lettuce for every sandwich. That would be our balanced chemical equation. So imagine we went to our kitchen and we had the following ingredients. We had 10 pieces of bread, eight tomatoes, five pieces of lettuce, and seven pieces of salami. And we want to know which one of these reactants is limiting our reaction. So if we take a quick look, if we have 10 pieces of bread and we need two pieces for every sandwich, that means we can make five sandwiches. If we have eight tomatoes and we need two each to make our sandwich, that means that we could make four sandwiches. We have seven pieces of salami, but we need three for every sandwich. So that means we can only make two sandwiches with our salami. And we have five pieces of lettuce, but we'd only need one per. So we could make five sandwiches with the lettuce. So if we take a look here, we can see quickly which one's our limiting reactant. Our limiting reactant is our salami. We're only able to make two sandwiches total. So to define the limiting reactant, that's the reactant that's completely used up in a chemical reaction. And once that reactant is used up, the reaction will stop. It doesn't matter if you have extra bread, tomatoes, or lettuce. You can't make any more sandwiches if you don't have any more salami. The excess reactants or reactants would be the ones that are left over following the reaction. So in our sandwich analogy, you would have excess bread, you would have excess tomatoes and lettuce um, because the salami is the limiting reactant. So the way we find our limiting reactant, we need to find out how much product each reactant can make, just like we did with the, the salami sandwich example. And the one that we find in the least numbers will be the limiting reactant. So now we'll work through an example. So imagine we had 4.83 grams of lithium nitride reacting with 5.80 grams of water to make lithium hydroxide and ammonia. We're being asked to find the limiting reactant. The first thing we'll have to do is find the balanced chemical equation. So we'll do that right now. So we have Li3N plus H2O makes LiOH plus NH3. So if we take a look, we have three lithiums on the reactant side, but only one on the product side. So we'll start off by trying to put a three there. And that now makes us have three 
oxygens and three hydrogens, but then we have three hydrogens here. So if we put a three right here, let's just see what happens. So we have three H2Os, so that makes six hydrogens, and that matches the six on the product side. And now we have three oxygens, which ma matches what we have on the product side. So our balanced chemical equation is Li3N plus 3H2O makes three LiOHs and NH3 or ammonia. So now we need to solve our equation, and we're going to use the same table that we used for um, our mass relationship equations and, and lesson. So like I said before, I like to put everything in this table because the way we have it set up, um, you put your information in, your mass is here, and then you divide by the molar mass, and then you get the number of moles, and then you divide by the ratio or the coefficient to find the ratio. And then when you're trying to find your product, you multiply up. And I make each column one of the reactants or the products going across this way. So the first thing we'll have to do is put in our masses of each. So for lithium nitride, we had 4.83 grams. And for water, we had 5.80 grams. Our next steps will be to find the molar mass of both of those compounds. So the molar mass of lithium nitride would be equal to three times the molar mass of lithium, which is 6.94, plus the molar mass of nitrogen, which is 14.01. So that value, when we put those numbers in, we get 34.83 grams per mole. And then for water, that's equal to two times molar mass of hydrogen, so two times 1.01, .01 plus the molar mass of oxygen, which is 16.00. So that will work out to be 18.02 grams per mole. Our next step is to find out how many moles of each. So the first one, we divide the mass over the molar mass. So 4.83 grams divided by 34 0.83 grams per mole. So I got 0 0.1387 moles. And we divide by the coefficient. So we divide by one. So it's in its lowest amounts will be 0 0.1387 moles. So now we'll do the same thing with water. So we had 5.80 moles of or grams of water. We'll divide that by the molar mass, so 18.02. We get a value of 0 0.3219. But we have three, a coefficient of three, so we need to divide that by three. So that's going to equal. 0 0.1072 moles. So the one that's in the lowest amounts would be water. So water is the limiting reactant. So sometimes we'll be asked to predict the mass of the product that will be produced. So in this example, we are told that a 1.00 gram chunk of white phosphorus is burned in 15 grams of oxygen to make tetraphosphorus decoxide. And we're being asked to find out what mass of P4O10 is made. So again, the first thing we need to do is find the balanced chemical equation. So we have P4 plus O2 makes P4O10. So if we take a quick look, the phosphoruses are balanced. There's four of them on either side. But we only have two oxygens on the reactant side, but 10 on the product side. So we need to put a 5 in front of the O2 to balance that reaction. So now that we have balanced the equation, we can set everything up in our table. So again, I've set everything up here, and we know that we have 
one gram of P4 and 15 grams of oxygen. And what we want to find out is how many grams of P4O10 we will produce. So the first thing we have to do is find the molar mass of both of these. So the next thing we need to do is find the molar mass of each of our substances. So the molar mass of phosphorus, P4, is 4 times 30.97. So that works out to be 123.88 grams per mole. And then the molar mass of oxygen would be 2 times 16 grams per mole, so that would be 32 Point zero grams per mole. Now we'll find the number of moles. So 1.00 divided by 123.88. That gives us 0 0.00807 moles. And we divide by the coefficient, so it's the coefficient is 1, so it's 0 0.008 zero seven moles of phosphorus and then we are going to find out the number of moles of oxygen so we have 15 divided by 32 grams per mole that gives us 0 0.46875 but this time we have a five in front of the oxygen so that's a coefficient of five so we're going to divide by five and we're going to get a value of 0 0.09375. So we can see very quickly that the phosphorus is our limiting reactant. So this one is our limiting. So we're going to take this information now and carry it over to our table to our product table. So we're going to write down that value. So 0 0.00807 moles. And we're going to times that by the coefficient of 1. So we have 0 0.00807 moles. But now we need to find the molar mass. So that's going to be equal to um, 4 times the molar mass of phosphorus, which is 123.88, plus 10 times the molar mass of oxygen, which would be 160. So add those two together, and we get a molar mass of 283.88 grams per mole. So we're going to times that by the number of moles. And we get a mass of 2.29 grams of P4O10.